Greetings, curious minds! Welcome back to Mainly Facts, where the excitement never fades. Are you geared up for today's exploration into the extraordinary? Let's uncover the mysteries. Story 1. Am I the a-hole for telling my husband to get over himself when he started berating me for not picking up his brother's son from school? My husband, 37, took his nephew, 12, in after his dad, my husband's brother, was diagnosed with cancer. He told me that his nephew would be staying with us until his dad completes his chemo treatment. I agreed, although he did not consult me about it first, but I told him that he'll be his responsibility, not mine. He asked me to explain why, and I told him it's because 1. He didn't consult me before taking his nephew in, and 2. I'm not equipped nor experienced in taking care slash being committed to child care. I still have to cook and clean, obviously. He said it was fine and that he'd be taking care of him on his own. The other day he called me in the afternoon saying he was stuck in a two-hour meeting and asked if I could go pick his nephew up from school. I said I was having lunch with mom and discussing family issues. He insisted, but I reminded him that he said he'd be taking care of his nephew, including school pickup slash drop-off. I suggested he try to get off work or call some family member to go pick him up. He tried to argue, but I hung up. I went home at three and surprisingly found my husband there. He was angry and started yelling at me, calling me selfish and unfeeling. I told him that his lack of management wasn't my fault. He yelled, saying that my lunch with mom could have effing waited, but I chose to be effing petty just to prove a point. I said that wasn't true and told him to get over himself and stop acting like he was the victim when he put himself in this situation, knowing he wouldn't commit. He yelled that he was trying to do all he can to help his brother out, but it was me who was playing victim after I refused to help out. We argued some more and I ended up going to stay with my mom for the night. He texted me some choice words, that's when I turned my phone off. We're still arguing about it. I just don't like either person in this story a whole lot. Like, first off, you keep referring to it as like your husband's nephew or, you know, my husband's brother's son. Like, if you're married to your husband, it's your nephew. That's, that is how that works to you. You kind of marry into a family, and it it just seems weird to me for you to be like, oh, no, ick. Like, and it, it's fine, it, like, it's fine you don't want to take care of kids. And super wrong that the husband did not consult uh, his partner beforehand. That is not okay. You don't do that. Like, that's a huge decision. Even though, yes, I think it's wonderful that this husband wants to take in his brother's kid when his brother is cancer. That's really, really kind and wonderful. But no matter how good of a thing it is, it is a huge decision and you gotta talk to your partner about that. But also, like, okay, now the partners agreed, like, well, fine, but it's all your responsibility. And to also just be like, no, I'm genuinely never going to help out. I don't care. Like, that's not a good partnership. This doesn't seem super healthy. Like, I know partnerships need certain boundaries and stuff. That's fine. But it really feels like this person's like, no, no, we're dating, but I don't care about your family and I will never burden myself to help them. I've, I've married you and I don't, like, I don't care about the things you care about in life. Like, I, I'm, I might be blowing this completely out of portion, but it's just... I, yeah, I don't see any winners in this. I think that they both have screwed up and I don't like it, so moving on. Story 2. So a guy has misled me and I mirrored his own crappy behavior knowing it would hurt him. In a nutshell, I was seeing a guy who I met randomly through a friend. He asked me on multiple dates and I have straightforwardly told him that I am not looking for just a hookup, to which he assured me that his intentions were different and that he felt like this could go somewhere. Fast forward a month of us going on dates, talking, him being the perfect gentleman, we sleep together, and two days later I get hit with a, I've realized I'm not ready for anything serious right now and I want to be transparent with you, let's keep it casual, BS. How convenient. So, I decided not to be an adult and play his game. I pretended to be confused but then said that it's better for us both this way. He immediately called me and started asking to which I responded, well I realized I don't want anything serious with you which made him go insane. It's been a week and he's calling me every day wanting to spend time with me, trying to make me want him apparently. One thing that changed is now he's getting the full-on random hookup option treatment, obviously. 
sort of being suggested by this sub after realizing I'm by far not a villain here. I, I, I see no problems with this. Yeah, the person you, you slept together two days later is just like, mm, I'm not ready for anything serious now that I've had intercourse, which maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe that was legitimate. Until, of course, this person goes, yeah, you're right. I realized I don't want anything serious with you. And they're like, ah, ah, what? Like, <laughs> I just, people, people stop. Just, just be open and honest with each other from the get go about stuff. Don't, uh, I don't know. <sighs> Blech. Story one. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister-in-law why I've missed her wedding ceremony and therefore ruining her wedding evening? I, 24 female, have a brother who's getting married to Victoria, 25 female. Vic and I have a very good relationship. Last year, my brother proposed. Vic took the lead for all the wedding preparation because she's taking a gap year between jobs. My brother easily supported both of them and the wedding. So whenever we have questions about the wedding, she's the person we need to talk to. Important background info. I'm allergic to nuts and coconuts. I don't need an EpiPen, but I have massive diarrhea. Last time I had a reaction, I was so dehydrated I needed to go to the hospital. For the wedding day, we have a caterer planned for an only family brunch. Then it's the ceremony, and then we have a celebration with all the guests. So, for the meals at the wedding, I texted two months in advance to Vic to ask if I would be able to eat and told her my specific food allergies in case she forgot. I told her that if not, I would be able to bring my lunch and eat amongst everyone without any problem. It's something I do sometimes at big family gatherings because I don't expect everyone to be extra careful every time for me. Vic told me that everything should be fine. Four days before the wedding, I texted again to be sure, and she said that the menu does not contain any of my allergens. Wedding day on the family brunch, I started to feel bad in my tummy. I privately asked the chef if anything contained any nut slash coconut, and whole, lo and behold, the sauce for the egg contained coconut. I excused myself and went back home 20 minutes away from the venue. After this, well, you can imagine, the toilet became my best friend. I spent the next five hours on the toilet. I texted my brother to excuse myself that I won't be able to come to the ceremony and I would try to come to the celebration. So around eight hours after the brunch, I was able to go back to the celebration. I gave my wedding toast to my brother and after, Vic came to me and asked why I was absent from the ceremony. I told her that the brunch did contain coconut and I spent the whole day on the toilet. I'm glad I was able to come back to the ceremony and did not need to go to the hospital. She then left back to my brother and spent the rest of the evening talking to guests. Next day, I received many, many texts from my brother saying I was an a-hole to tell her during the wedding day that she was responsible for me being sick and that I should have told her some lies to make her happy. He told me she cried the whole wedding night about this. Since then, I received texts from family members, friends, bridesmaids who called me a butt for ruining her wedding night. I'm starting to believe I was an butt and should have said her a false reason explaining my absence during the ceremony because it ruined her evening. So, am I the a-hole? Should I have lied to her? <sighs> Maybe? I don't know. Like, like how? also, how would you know that she would take it that hard? Like... Maybe you could have put it in a way like, like, uh, it turns out that there was some stuff in it. Who knew, you know, or maybe the chefs added it last minute or whatever, or maybe they just forgot, you know, like if you put it in a way where she's just like, where were you? And you were just like, there was coconut in the food. Okay. Maybe that might be a little harsh on her wedding day. I'd reel that one in a little bit, but otherwise I think if you just said, like, yeah, it turns out there was some coconut in the food, but I'm glad I got back. Like, I guess it might have been all in the way you delivered it, but even still, I don't know. She'll get over it. Maybe. Maybe not. Ugh. Story two. I kept getting collection calls for someone else wouldn't stop until I left messages for their CEO and CFO at home. I live in a corporate relocation apartment for three months while relocating for a job. I started getting collection calls for the previous occupant almost immediately. They called multiple times a day. It would wake up my kids during naps, at, after bedtime, weekends, you name it. I started by politely letting them know I wasn't the person they were looking for, nicely, rudely, begging, you name it. They were incredibly rude and refused to tell me their names, name of their supervisor, etc. I was at my wit's end. 
After one particularly nasty encounter, I snapped. I started Googling, pre-Google equivalent, their corporate officers, etc. I found that the CEO and CFO had very unusual names and quickly discovered they had publicly listed phone numbers. Yes, it was not a huge bank, and this was in the early 2000s before people were exclusively using cell phones. This was approximately 8 p.m. on a Sunday night. I called each number explaining that since I kept receiving collection calls from their company in spite of not being the person that they sought, every time they called me, I would call them. Left my phone number and name and hung up. Not even 10 minutes later, I got a call from their IT department asking for all the pertinent info, who the customer was, my name, and how to spell it. I never got a call from them again. I hope someone got fired. Some collection companies are the scuzziest, just worst operations out there. The lengths that they will go to harass people is, I think, pretty much illegal if you can get the evidence for it. And frankly, any company that operates in that kind of way where they are just genuinely harassing people, I hope they go out of business. And I'm sorry for the folks who are working those jobs because they just need to make ends meet and get by. Is it really worth it? Like, that one feels, like, kind of just too close to selling out on your morals and ethics and stuff to get by. I know you need to make a living, but do you have to make a living doing that? And if you do, okay, but accept that people are going to hate you. You just, you can't be surprised at that. You can't be like, I can't believe people are upset that I call them 12 times a day demanding that they give me money even though they tell me that they're not, that that person doesn't live there anymore. Like, you don't get to be surprised. You're, you're being an a-hole. Story one. Am I the a-hole for asking my husband's friend to tell his wife to stop trying to visit my husband when she thinks I'm not there? My husband's primary residence is in Italy, mine is in the UK. On one of my trips to Italy, his housekeeper told me that the wife of my husband's friend kept trying to visit him while I wasn't there. She said she came over every single day even though most days he wasn't even home or was working from home so didn't even say hello to her. We went out together as a group so I brought it up to her when it was just the two of us and asked her to stop. I told her my husband doesn't like being disturbed while he works so she should really arrange something instead of just turning up. She waved me off and acted like it was no big deal. I asked her several more times to stop, but she continued to do it the minute I was back in the UK every single time. In the end, I was so fed up I contacted her husband and asked him to tell his wife to stop. He wasn't aware this was going on and said he would speak to her. His wife is now angry at me and is claiming I'm implying things about the type of woman she is. She also said I was treating her like her husband's property and I was pathetic for telling him to just admit she made me insecure. My husband is mostly indifferent, but also told me I had caused chaos in their friendship group as everybody knows what's going on and it's causing a lot of gossip. Am I the a-hole? I'm all for people having friends of, uh, you know, any gender, opposite gender, whatever, you know. I, I don't think it's a big deal. I do think it's weird that she's going to visit him, like, every single day and her husband is also unaware of that. like. That seems weird, right? That's, that's odd. I don't have any friend who tries to see me every single day. My best friend and I, we chat online a lot, but not every day. So I don't know, that, that does feel weird. And I feel the fact that you kind of brought up that you weren't comfortable and she just mm, dismissed you. I don't think you're an a-hole, but I think also that your husband is just like, ah, you shouldn't have done that. You're causing a stir up. It's like, no, no, you're not. She is. The other person is because it's weird. Story two, deny my ability to use my backyard when my dog is dying. All right, you'll no longer be able to enjoy yours. A couple months ago, our lovely older pit bull was fighting cancer and we had the painful decision made to have her put down. She was low on energy at this point, moving was difficult, and getting to her to eat was near impossible. With that, one of the only things we wanted to give her was one last day outside in the backyard. So the day before she was to be put to sleep in the early morning, I set out to set up a tent in our backyard and filled it inside and outside with things our dog absolutely loved. I noticed as I was getting things set up, the neighbor behind us was placing sticks and leaves in their fire pit. 
Normally I wouldn't care at all, but the poor dog is having trouble breathing at this point. I figured it wouldn't be an imposition to let them know my current situation, and asked if they could postpone the burning just for today. The wife let me know that they're just going to be burning a few things to clear their yard and it won't last very long at all, and she gave me some level of understanding about the dog. With that, she lit up the fire and the smoke billowed into my backyard. For some context, the neighbor is directly behind my property. I have about a 100 foot by 100 foot backyard, and theirs is about 50 foot length by 100 feet wide. Just to add to this, I don't mind if people are burning things around me. I'm not particularly fond of it, but if it makes them happy, that makes me happy. A few hours go by, I notice they're still outside adding more things to the fire. I approach and ask them kindly on an ETA, trying to be as patient and understanding as possible. They say they're almost done. A few hours later, there is a raging fire outside, and I can visibly see the husband outside pointing at my home, yelling, and then adding actual campfire logs, no longer leaves and sticks. At this moment, I am not angry, I'm just very sad. Poor dog isn't going to have the last day we wanted to give her. We would take her somewhere else, but don't want to stress her, so we spent the rest of the day inside. Later that night, around 9 p.m., as the sun is setting, I go out for a walk and notice the damn fire is still roaring. Mind you, as it was most of the time, with no one there. At this point, I am now peed off and start looking into state laws, city laws, and everything in between. From this, I found out that my city has an ordinance that clearly states a fire pit cannot be within 50 feet of a structure. I could, if I wanted to, contact the city and have it stopped simply because no matter where they place it in their backyard, it will be within 50 feet of their home, but that seems non-permanent enough. I was already considering getting a fence installed and already had multiple quotes. It was hard to swallow a bill for $15,000. But within 24 hours of this situation, guess what I paid for? The fence will be installed within the next couple of weeks around the edge of my property, and their fire pit is no further away than 10 feet from my fence. Can't take a single day away from your fire pit for a dying dog? Well, enjoy never using it ever again. Absolutely F those neighbors, and I say this because, I, yeah, I, I love animals, I love my dogs, and this tugged on my heartstrings. But what jerks? Do, like, you couldn't even just say, like, no, we really have this whole thing planned out today, you know, I'm sorry, we can't, you know, if there's anything we can do to help steer the smoke away. They didn't even do that, they just lied. They just lied and made you waste your time, so you couldn't give your dog its, its last day. No, F them. They're, oh my gosh, like, they are, you should have both called the police and put up the fence and just, oh, I know, oh god, I know I say don't get, don't start feuds with neighbors over little things, but what a crappy thing for them to do. So, yeah, I fully support this feud. Don't mess with dogs. Story three. Tear open our driveway to pour concrete? Fine, you'll probably enjoy having to dig the concrete out of the ground. Twice. Not about me, but about a guy I used to work with. He was a mountain of a guy, a huge Turk, but the kindest guy I ever met. He'd do anything for people he liked. Nobody ever saw anybody get on his bad side until that fateful day. As it happens, he was also our delivery driver, and he spent most of the days on the road in his semi, leaving before dawn and returning quite late, if at all, that day. Our warehouse had a driveway large enough for him to, to pull the semi into and load slash unload. The supermarket next door decided to do some renovations and expand. When they started construction, they started tearing out their brick parking lot and getting close to tearing out our driveway. Boss runs out, tells them where our property line is, and is assured they won't cross onto our property. Everybody goes back inside, nobody worries, until there's suddenly a raging bear Turk standing in the break room shouting about how the driveway has been torn up and he can't get his lorry in. We go out, and indeed, the driveway is half missing, and there's a concrete building foundation poured in. Construction workers are nowhere in sight. The boss sends the supermarket manager an email message, and everybody goes home. Next day, we arrive at the site of a very angry construction workers. Apparently, the delivery driver went back in the middle of the night with some bolt cutters, liberated about 30 of their shopping carts, and stuck them into the drying concrete in various comical positions. Overnight, the concrete hardened and the carts became quite difficult to remove. Construction crews bring in the jackhammers and four days later, most of the concrete is gone and they start preparing for another pour, this time leaving our driveway intact. 
Foundation comes out fine, everything is looking good. At that time, my boss showed up with the announcement that he had a survey done, and while they didn't tear open our driveway the second time, they were still closer to our property line than allowed, and he'd already filed a complaint to get the concrete removed. Took them another week of jackhammering to get it out. I guess my one question would be, was the first thing, like getting it dug up and all that stuff and pouring the concrete, was that the grocery store's fault? Or the constr like, where the construction company, I would assume, doesn't work for the grocery store. They're like contractors or whatever. And so I feel like destroying the grocery store carts might not have been the best route. I don't know, but I'd also be mad because you did tell the grocery store or whatever. I'm a little confused as to exactly who did what, uh, aside from, you know, the delivery driver giving them a very hard time. Funny, I will say that. and. I guess all the labor that had to be done to free those and fix it all up was on the construction workers, so... Ah, uh, I don't hate this revenge, but it does seem maybe a little much? I'm not sure. What do you think? Story 1. Am I the a-hole for saying my babysitting rates are $35 an hour? I'm a software engineer with a full-time job and a side hustle of doing freelance coding work in my own time. I've always been the type to have a side hustle I put a lot of my free time into. I get really bored sitting idle. My freelance hourly rates are $60 an hour, and at my full-time job, my hourly pay works out to about $40 an hour, so that's how I value my time. Anyway, over Christmas vacation, I was staying at my parents' house. My cousin was also staying over with her three young kids from Christmas to New Year's. I've been planning on doing some of my freelance projects when I had free time. In the morning, when my family had no plans, I wasn't in any rush. I was already ahead of schedule on them all, but I didn't really have anything else to do. It was in a really rural area, and it's like an hour drive to the nearest anything. Then my cousin and her husband asked if I could babysit all day for three days so they could visit some friends in the area and hang out with just adults. I said I had planned on doing freelance work at the library, and she offered to pay me to babysit. I said I could if they got close to my freelance rates. She wanted a number, and although my freelance rates are $60, I didn't feel like that was right, it was high. But I didn't want to go too low. Honestly, babysitting three kids would be harder for me than the routine coding work I had for my freelance project. I don't know a lot about kids, and I've never babysat for long, and I had a feeling it would be stressful and difficult. So I said $35, which is below what I make hourly at work, and what is the bare minimum I'd value my time for if that time is spent doing difficult work? And she went crazy at me, saying that's a ridiculous rate for babysitting, that I was entitled and being selfish, and that I'm trying to take advantage of how she didn't have other options, etc. I said that's way below what I'd be making if I had the time to do my own work, and I'd be putting off my own work to babysit. Her husband then got mad at me, saying that I was a 24-year-old girl, that I'm damn near a child myself, that my time is not worth that much, and it's childish to say that it was, and that I was a stupid girl for not knowing that babysitting costs like 15 an hour. When I grew up and had kids of my own, I would see how stupid I was being. I was kind of done with being called stupid, so I just told them I hoped they could find someone else. My mom thinks that I asked for something offensive, and my cousin and her husband obviously did too. Am I the a-hole for giving that number? Okay, look, I'm all for, like, helping out family and, like, offering to watch kids and stuff like that for them for free. I would never charge a babysitting rate to my si either of my sisters. Um, they have kids. I, I love my nephews and niece. They're, they're delightful. And, yeah, if I were to watch them, I wouldn't charge them a dime if it was only for, like, a day. But they're asking for three days. That's a big commitment. That's like day and night to help them out. Who knows exactly what ages they are, like how much you have to be paying attention at night and watching them. That's a really big ask. Like, I'm sorry, folks. Uh, ask like, hey, could you watch them for the day while we go see someone for the day? Sure, fine, whatever. But asking for three days is a lot. And then to get upset when it's like, hey, we want to pull you away from work that's going to pay you a lot of money and offer you very, very little. I, I just think that's way too big of an ask. I don't know. Like, I, I'm really big on helping out family however I can for no compensation if possible. But 
this just seems like a lot. I don't know. Maybe the rest of you have different opinions and stuff, but also the fact that they're like, oh, you're just 24 and you, you're not worth that much, blah, blah, blah. That really rubbed me the wrong way. Like, I'm sorry. Their reaction made them suck all the more. So I don't blame her for in the end being like, all right, well, pff, peace out. Story two. My sister's funeral was ruined by some bee and her kids. Well, crap, I'm guessing you guys need background. My sister, we'll call her E, was killed by a drunk driver about a month ago, and this really hurt not only because she's my sister, but we were best friends. She always had my back and I had hers. She was 20, so she was just getting into the fun part of life, about to graduate college, everything was effing great. So the funeral was hard at the start. I was a bearer, which for those who don't know, they helped carry the casket. When the priest opened it up at first and let us look, that's when I started crying and I never stopped. Almost halfway through, I hear the doors slam open in the back. There's this woman and three kids that walk in. This woman is talking, in reality is close to screaming into her phone. Of course, after two minutes, the kids are running around and being loud. This is getting on everyone's nerves, so my mom asked the priest to get them out. The priest is a timid guy, so of course he couldn't get himself to do it. So the page is someone from the looks of it. So while we wait for this family to get out, we have to stop. I was really peed at this damn mom, and I was about to murder her when my mom got up and stormed over to the bee. She grabs her phone and slams it on the ground. The entitled bee starts freaking out like her kid just died. She's screaming at my mom, who's just standing there in rage. When this bee is done, she starts screaming about how you clearly are important enough to ruin my daughter's funeral, then you can get the F out and get yourself a new damn phone. I was a mixture of shocked and impressed. Shocked, because I've never seen my mom that mad, and not even in the hospital. Impressed, because she did nothing more physical than point a finger. I would have snapped her neck. The bee, of course, defended herself, saying that how could she know it's a funeral? Look around, bee! Why is there a casket, tears, a priest, the effing nerve on some people to do crap like that? She started mocking my mom, getting her thighs, and on the way out, called us horrible people for ruining her afternoon. This enraged me. I ran after her, and after I screamed out to the entitled bastard, I started screaming the following. You effing S. I don't know why S. I was just mad. Your afternoon is ruined? Oh no, what will we do? What would we do without the poor bastard having a nice afternoon? She cuts me off and said, actually, you people ruined my afternoon. This kills me, and I got the most mad I've ever been. You came here with your damn kids and ruined my effing sisters. Keep in mind, it's not my aunt, it's my effing sister, and you effing ruined her funeral. So your day is ruined, I mock cry. Well, go have your damn pity party somewhere else, jackbutt. At this point, I'm out of breath, and I'm dead staring at her. Well, maybe if you weren't here in my space, I couldn't take her anymore. So I punched her in the gut. It wasn't too hard, not enough to really hurt her, but enough for her to feel it. She, of course, screams Bloody Mary. I turn around and walk inside as she screams the usual, I've been assaulted, call 911 BS. After that, I never saw her again. She probably didn't call the cops because she knew she was in the wrong. In the end, we finally got my sister buried, and we lived on. I definitely miss her, and I'm so proud of myself for standing up in her name. Every once in a while, I stop in her room, and I have a one-way conversation with her, and it's comforting. This all was ridiculous, I know, but I just can't believe someone would have the guts to do that. Really slaughters my faith in humanity. Anyway, thanks for reading this. Hope you realized what absolute crap bags these people are. I absolutely do. And just, holy crap. Holy crap. A, the restraint on your mom to do nothing but, like, toss the phone and tell her to get out. And, I mean, for this woman to not, like, a, okay, fine. She didn't notice the funeral right away. She's too wrapped up in her own world. But then to have someone come up and, like, do that and realize, oh, I've been an a-hole at this woman's daughter's funeral. I'm in the wrong here. Maybe I didn't notice, but clearly, clearly they're going through something so much more than what I could comprehend. I need to just take the L on this one. But she didn't. She doubled down and got, like, angry and in their face. I mean, I just, I can't imagine what a crap person you have to be to do that. 
at someone's funeral, like that's that's a whole different level of entitled. Like I feel like even some of the most entitled Karens, if they started to go off and realized, oh, I'm doing this at a woman's daughter's funeral or someone's sister's funeral, this is the worst. I need to stop. But this woman didn't. And that just makes her... I don't even know what. Story 1. Am I the a-hole? My classmates saved goldfish by releasing them into the ocean. I called her a dumb butt. My classmate recently made a TikTok and she showed it to a group of people at lunchtime. They were next to our table so I overheard the girl say, Hey, look at my TikTok I made. Come check it out. And in it, she explains how she rescued goldfish from the pet store and released them into the ocean so they can live free. I was horrified upon hearing this. I love fish and have several aquariums, so I'm fairly knowledgeable on them. I walk over and ask her to show me the video, and I facepalmed. She asked me why, and I said, You realize you're actually a dumb butt, right? This is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. Her friend said, Well, that's just rude. Why would you say that? Because she cares? To which I had to explain that goldfish are freshwater fish. They can't survive the ocean because it's salt water, so all those goldfish were dead in minutes. They basically choked to death as salt filled up their gills. Lastly, you never release animals into the wild. There are goldfish that are destroying our rivers and lakes because of dumb butts like her. They said that I'm a bully and walk away. I later got called into the principal's office who told me I was expected to apologize and I said no. I stand by what I said. F ignorant people who destroy the environment. My parents were called over and I got sent home and my parents are peed. I refuse to apologize. I might get suspended. I mean, you're right, but you are an a-hole. I mean, there's, I don't think there's any getting around it because you know the non-a-hole way of doing that? Oh my gosh, you should actually know those are freshwater fish. You don't want to release them into the ocean. And then just explain all the stuff that you explain in here without calling her a dumb butt and making her feel bad for trying to do something right. Oh, you're angry at people because they don't know these things and they're doing stuff the bad way? Wow, I wonder if you could just educate them so they could do things right and maybe that would be nice instead of just being an a-hole about it. You're totally right. People shouldn't be doing that stuff, but when it's all with good intentions, you don't have to be a prick about it. Story 2. Encounter with Entitled Parents in the Pediatric Emergency Room This happened yesterday. My three-year-old daughter was diagnosed with bacterial pneumonia, and we ended up in the emergency room because she was struggling to breathe. Pneumonia is very serious. She was put on a nebulizer and oxygen and given an IV for more meds while we waited for a room to open up in the PICU. The emergency room was pretty full. The rooms are small, and you share them. There's a curtain that divides them. There are no doors, just another curtain. Around 4 p.m., a family member arrives with my mom, dad, five-year-old daughter. The mom briefly looked in on my side of the room and could see my toddler laying in the bed hooked to machines with an IV. It's obvious that this isn't a stubbed toe. So I can't help but hear the parents explaining why their kids are in the ED, stomach pain. Meanwhile, the kid is asking for something to eat. She sounds quite perky. Parents insist she has a kidney infection. Whatever, I don't know her history, not interested. So my daughter was given a steroid through her nebulizer to help open her airways. Her oxygen, which they wanted 90 or above, kept dipping into the low 80s, making an alarm sound. The nebulizer makes some noise, and the side effect is hyperactivity, so my extremely sick kid was medically wired as hell. Within 30 minutes of arriving, the entitled parents call for a nurse and ask for a private room because their daughter needs to rest somewhere quiet. Meanwhile, their daughter was blasting Ryan's toy review from her tablet and loudly demanding chocolate chip cookies and milk. The nurse explained that there are no private rooms in the emergency room. My daughter then starts to have a coughing fit, which is scary, as her oxygen drops off and she chokes until she vomits. I had two nurses trying to help by suctioning her and patting her back. I'm trying to help her, but my daughter is turning blue. I hear the entitled mother ask the nurse, How long are they going to be expected to listen to that? Afterwards, my daughter was wiped out and was crying a little, and the entitled mom rang for her nurse again and asked again for someplace quiet so her little girl can rest. Her daughter was making a lot of noise playing with something. 
Then they started playing with the lights. The room had a light switch to control the lights on each side, and then a master switch to cut all the lights. My daughter is afraid of the dark. The entitled dad cuts the lights for the room, making it quite dark with the curtain over the doorway drawn. I tell my husband to turn on the lights on our side, which he does. The entitled mom calls her nurse to complain that it's too bright for her little girl to sleep. It's 5 p.m. The nurse explained that they are welcome to shut the lights off on their side, but they have to leave our side alone. They complain a bit about how ill their daughter is. Meanwhile, my daughter is drowning in her own lungs, which I'm sure they know as you can hear everything. Then the nurse leaves and they shut the lights off for the entire room again. My husband immediately turns ours on and calls through the curtain that we need our lights on. Silence. Our nurse comes in to attend to my daughter's IV and they attempt to get her to force us to have the lights off. Our nurse basically tells them to knock it off. Then they start pushing for more space. They attempt to push our chairs away where my husband is sitting. They put their chairs way over on our side of the room, pushing the curtain into our faces, essentially. My husband pushes it back. They call and complain, rinse and repeat. Finally, a room in the PICU opens up and we're told that we would be admitted in an hour. Entitled parents complain that they asked for a private room first. The nurse explains that we're being admitted, not given a private room in the ED. The entitled parent demands they be admitted first because their daughter is so much sicker. The nurse says that there is no reason for their daughter to be admitted as she's just constipated and as soon as she poops, they'll be free to go. The parents start freaking out. So that's my story, how the parents of a little girl who needed to take a crap felt they were more important than a little girl with pneumonia. Edit. First of all, my daughter's doing much better. Thanks for all the well wishes. Second, many of you say you would have caused some sort of scene or you would have acted aggressively or called them on their behavior. I work in an emergency room for four years. Unruly parents were often removed from the emergency room without their child. I kept my head down and took it because the care my child was receiving to keep her heart beating was more important. Imagine that. My daughter was never in danger. Her nurses were attentive, helpful, friendly, and responsive. I would have taken whiplashes from Satan himself if it meant my daughter getting care. The petty complaints and power play coming from the other side of the curtain didn't affect my child at all. The nurses had their number. They were handling it. Good on this person for holding their cool and bad on those other parents for being so self-centered. Like, I get that they're worried about their own child. But A, they have medical professionals saying like, your daughter's not that bad off. It's fine. And B, you can't be so focused on your own child in a hospital setting that you can hear another little girl with pneumonia who's like struggling and throwing up, hooked up to all that kind of stuff, and not care about her to the point of like putting your child above her. Like, I know as a parent, you're always going to put your child first, but sometimes just a little bit logic and empathy need to actually enter into the equation. Otherwise, I'm scared of you as a human being. I need you to have some amount of empathy in the world, or my assumption is that you could very easily become some kind of murderer. That's all I can say. It's very frightening when people act like this. I can't quite get a grip on it. Story three. Entitled mother thinks I should give my diabetic snacks to her daughter. So I'm a type 1 diabetic, and in the morning I went out for a bike ride. As I'm a diabetic, I always bring snacks with me in case I go low or get hungry. I bring a juice box, a few glucose tablets, two fruit chew bars, and two granola bars, just enough for me to be able to correct my blood sugar twice and have a small snack. As I was biking home, I passed someone sitting on the ground who looked like they were kind of distressed, so I pulled over to ask if they were okay. The guy was a little younger than me and told me he was a diabetic and showed me his medical alert necklace. He explained that he had gone low while biking but forgot to refill the snacks in his bag when he had left, so he was trying to figure out what to do. No one to bring him anything but didn't want to call an ambulance over this. I offered him my snacks and to sit with him while we waited for it to go back up, explaining that I was a diabetic. After I had sat down with him and gave him the tablets, a woman came over and asked for my juice box for her daughter. I explained that I was giving him what I had because he was a diabetic and had low blood sugar and I needed to rest to ensure I could get home safe. She started to tell me that she and her daughter had been biking for a few hours and she was hungry and just wanted my juice box and a granola bar. I asked if her daughter was diabetic and she said no, so I apologized and again explained nicely that I need those for myself. 
The conversation that followed is as such. So why did you give him some? Because he's a diabetic and his blood sugar is very low. For reference, our blood sugar is supposed to be between 4 to 8 and his was 2.3. Do you know him? No, but as a diabetic, I know how dangerous lows can be, and if I was in his position, I'd hope a fellow diabetic would try to help me. So you don't know him? The conversation continued like that, and she asked why I cared if I didn't know him and me giving the same explanation until the guy rechecked his blood sugar, and it was back up to 3.5. As this was still a little low for both of us to feel comfortable, I grabbed my juice to give to him, and this is when Entitled Mom tried to grab it out of my hand saying that if bl his blood sugar was still low, I should just call him ambulance, and then I could give my snacks to her and her daughter. At this point, I was honestly kind of peed and told her to F off, and that as a mom, she should have thought to bring snacks for her daughter, and if I hadn't gone by, what, she, what would she have done? She was red in the face, called me a bee, and stormed back to her daughter. The guy's level went up, and we parted ways, and as I started to bike away, I heard mom shout after me, calling me a bee again. Look, I get it. You've been out biking for a few hours. You or your daughter, if you didn't bring any sort of water or snack, yeah, you are probably really tired and out of it. That is no reason to take food from diabetics who might need it because that could possibly kill them. Like, how are you this entitled, lady? You gotta calm down. Like, if you're that tired, you and your daughter walk your bike to someplace with food or something. Don't try to steal food from people who might need it for legit medical reasons. I just... Why are you helping this other person? I, I'm a human with a soul. Sorry if you don't know what that's like, Rebecca. Story 1. Am I the a-hole for ruining Thanksgiving? I, 30 female, met my boyfriend, 30 male, three years ago. Before me, he was together with his high school sweetheart. They fell out of love and broke up. A year later, we started dating. His mom, however, was still heartbroken about it. I was very understanding and thought she needed time to get to know me. The ex basically grew up with them and they saw her as part of the family. For the first year of my relationship, his mom would call me his ex's name until boyfriend got angry once and told her to be nice. She laughed it off and said it was just a habit. After that, she started calling me the wrong name, Janet instead of Jenny, fictional names just for the story. I corrected her a couple of times, but she seemed to like hurting me, so I ignored it later. My boyfriend has two sisters, and a couple of weeks before Thanksgiving, we were invited to a barbecue at the old sister's house. I was in the kitchen with my boyfriend's mom, the sister, and one of their husbands. The older sister then talked about how my boyfriend praised my cooking to her husband, and the mom was listening. She then said out loud, Sure, why don't we let Janet make the turkey this year? The sisters giggled and looked at each other, and I said, That's a great idea. I didn't tell my boyfriend what happened. On Thanksgiving, we went to his mom's house with the usual wine and dessert. She was shocked. I, everybody, was shocked. I said, what? I thought Janet was bringing the turkey. There was yelling, crying, and then we got kicked out. My boyfriend is so angry with me, he hasn't talked to me since. I think it's over, to be honest, but I don't think I did anything wrong, did I? I feel like part of that got deleted or cut off and we're missing, but I'm guessing she did not bring a turkey. Uh, because Janet was going to bring the turkey. And honestly, I don't think the boyfriend should be that angry. Like, seriously, your mom has been disrespecting your girlfriend over and over, and you kind of talked to her about it a little, but you've just kind of let things go. Then again, she did not tell him about this whole, like, we, why don't we let Janet make the turkey? I don't know. It seems maybe a little bit petty, but also deserved because they're just being kind of nasty to you. So I don't know. I think the boyfriend needs to get over it. And also, I think if people are going to be like yelling and crying and throwing a fit because there's no turkey for Thanksgiving, calm down. It's about being around the people and all that stuff. And uh, I don't know. There's better ways to handle all of this, I'm sure. But uh, I just, I can't with rude parents like that. Story 2. Ask a stupid question. My son is biracial and fairly dark compared to me. Regardless of how he looks, it still baffles me that someone would automatically assume adoption. Nothing against adoption. Adoption is awesome, and if I had the financial resources, I would definitely adopt or foster. Given the amount of diverse couples in the United States. Also, it is, really anybody, is it really anybody's damn business whether the child is adopted or not? 
While shopping with my adorable Spawn when he was about four to five months old, a woman with the aged soccer mom ASM look and a young teen obviously following along while watching videos on a smartphone approaches me and comments on how cute my kid is, then asks the question, where did you get him from? Seriously, what the hell sort of a question is that? Uh, my uterus. Where's that? Holy crap, did she just think I named a foreign country? Near the Straits of Fallopian. Well, how long did it take to get him? Are you effing kidding me? Well, uh, the initial proceedings were fairly quick, but then there was a nine-month wait. Let me tell you, it felt like a weight dropped from my gut when I finally got to hold him. ASM, with a look of comprehension finally dawning, you could have just said he was your real child. Oh, I could open up a whole new can of verbal whoop-butt over your bad die job, lady. But this was much more fun. ASM becomes red-faced, sputters an insult, and starts walking away. I gently hold my son's hand in the air and wave it. Me, say bye-bye to the crazy lady, sweetie. My son spits up instead. Yeah, she made me feel sick, too. Edit, holy beans and rice, I did not at all expect this to blow up like it has. Thank you for the awards and upvoting, everyone. Be excellent to each other. Another edit, my phone hasn't chirped so much since my ex tried to contact me on his friend's phone after I blocked his number. I love reading the stories some of you posted, and I'm trying to respond to as many of you as possible. You guys are awesome. Dear strangers, please stop making assumptions about people and their kids or the people they're with or whatever in public. Because you know what happens when you make an assumption? You make a, a something out of you. Just you. You're the only one who looks like a complete butt. It's you. You make the other people uncomfortable, but you look like a dang fool. So just stop it, please. Just stop assuming stuff about people. You can just ask normal questions that aren't assuming things. It's not that hard. Story three. She would rather risk killing her child than be wrong. I was sitting around reading stories here and I realized I had a perfect story. The entitled parent is my mother and her insane need to be right. When I was younger, my father had a massive heart attack, the result being that we had to change the family diet to something more heart healthy. Lots of people go to seafood for heart healthy diets because of all the healthy oils and fats, so shellfish and fish were a large part of the household. One night, we had shrimp pasta. I started getting this weird feeling all over my body. I felt like my whole body was on fire and like my nose was stuffed, so I had to take deep breaths through my mouth. I looked at my arms and giant red splotches started to appear all over me. At this point, I call my mother over and exclaim that I must be allergic to shrimp. She looks at me and replies, it doesn't look bad, just go to sleep. The entire night, I tossed and turned, unable to catch my breath or get away from the relentless heat oozing off my skin. I decided that day I would never have shrimp again. The next couple times my mom made a meal with shrimp, I would politely decline and make food for myself. Even though I made my own food from scratch, I was still feeling strange after the meal. I was starting to get to the point I would be gasping for air, barely able to swallow, and wheezing. I assumed that being in the same room when they cooked shrimp might be enough to make me feel sick. I mentioned this to my mother and got an irritated sigh and eye roll. You are not allergic to shrimp. So the next time dinner with shrimp rolls around, I just don't say anything. The symptoms came on as usual, but I just kept it to myself. Apparently, the lack of mentioning how bad I felt was interpreted as me admitting I was fine. My mother walks over all proud of herself and sits down next to me. See? I've been rubbing shrimp on your, your utensils before you eat for a while and you're perfectly fine. Needless to say, I eventually went full anaphylaxis, unfortunately from something other than shrimp while I was student teaching, and I had to go see an allergist. After my allergy panel, the doctor declared a very long list of foods, plants, and molds I was allergic to. Guess what was on the deathly allergic list? Shrimp. My mother's reaction when I pointed it out? She shrugged and said, oops. That was about a decade ago, and I still can't eat the food she has prepared. She just tested me again, with onions this time, just last year. She tells me there are no spices on things, and then remembers when my throat starts closing up and I have to devour Benadryl. The worst part is, my father knows and doesn't warn me. So that's my story of my mother preferring being correct over me being alive. I actually have a ton more of these. If anyone finds my random childhood stories interesting, I might post more. Thanks for reading.
Oh my goodness, I posted this before taking a nap and woke up to all of this support and concern. I appreciate it all so very much. To put some fears aside, I no longer live with my parents and are in light contact with them. My husband takes my allergies very seriously. He doesn't even allow them in the house, so I am safe from the poisonings. Also, I know a lot of people don't understand why I'm in contact at all. The cycle of abuse is a crazy thing, especially when it's all you know. You think it's normal until you escape. I'm in massive amounts of therapy and working on my mental and physical health. Edit 2. I posted another story about being paid for babysitting with a story from my mother about how I was a happy baby. I sadly have no idea how to link things or I'd put it here. Sorry about that. Why are there these parents who refuse to admit that their children have allergies? Because I've seen stories like this come up multiple times and I really just want to slap these parents and be like, stop almost killing your children. You're not a doctor. You don't get to make this call. What is wrong with you? And the fact that after you showed her the proof, she was like, oops. Or the fact that she was rubbing shrimp on your utensils. Put that utensil in her thigh. Just, ah, stop it. Stop trying to kill me. This is like, that's ludicrous behavior. You don't do that. Oh, jeez. I'm just, I'm losing my mind over this stuff. Um, I, don't do this, parents, okay? Just believe your kids when they say something makes them feel ill, even if you just think, oh, they're just saying that because they don't like it. Well, then don't make them eat it if they don't like it. You're, why? Would you, would you like it if people made you eat stuff you don't like? What if your daughter, every time you were cooking something, snuck, like, ghost pepper hot sauce into what you're eating, and then you're eating it, and you're like, oh, oh my god, and you're just like, really, mom? Really? It's not that bad. You're fine. Like, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't like it, you dingus. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.